Hey everyone, this is Brian. Today we're going to take a look at the Gigabyte Z97X UD7TH Thunderbolt motherboard. This is uh, an LGA 1150 motherboard by Gigabyte. It's going to work with uh, Intel chips, of course. Uh, this is going to be used for the new Haswell processors in the 1150 socket size. Uh, and of course has the uh, Intel Z97 chipset on it. Just going to show you what's in the box so you can check this out. You know, sometimes it's nice to see what's in the box with some of these motherboards in the flesh or in the silicone as it were. Uh, here's the motherboard of course and I'm going to pull that out in just a second. We're going to go over real quickly just what else is in the box. Uh, you're going to get your manual of course this multilingual installation guidebook, which you're going to take and do that with, because it is just ridiculous that uh, these are included, printed, with every single motherboard still. It's a giant waste of paper, but whatever. Uh, four SATA cables, an SLI connector, and your backing plate. And uh, I think a handy dandy sticker. Ooh, yes. Ultra durable right there. Not bad. All right, that's it. That's everything that's in the box. So let's get rid of that. And let's talk about the motherboard itself and just take a quick look at it. All right. <clears throat> Here's the board. Uh, one thing I do like about Gigabyte boards is that they don't use usually giant heat sinks on the North Bridge. Uh, this board stays pretty true to that. These heat sinks are a little bigger. And the only reason those can be kind of a drag is because it can make it hard to install some CPU coolers. But, you know, just do your homework on your cooler before you get one and you should be fine. You got four RAM slots on this board, uh, DDR3. RAM and um, up to 32 gigs of RAM. You know, not too bad if you are somebody who does heavier music or video production, you might need more than that, but 32 gigs is usually pretty good for most folks. Uh, the Gigabyte boards typically always have onboard uh, power switches and reset switches directly on the motherboard, which is something I personally really like because it makes it very easy to troubleshoot. There's also an error code and just overall code LED readout here on this board. Not all Gigabyte boards have that, but it seems that the newer boards are starting to get that, uh, which is kind of nice. There are a pretty good number of fan header connectors uh, on this board. You've got CPU and CPU option, which is for uh, regular power, but also if you're using water cooling, you can, can connect up to that optional one. Um, there is a system fan header connector right here, uh, just near the North Bridge there, next to your first PCIe 1 slot. And then you've got another connector down here by the RAM, and then you have two more right here on the uh, southern edge of the board. So a lot of fan header connectors, which is really nice. I really dislike boards that don't have a lot of fan connectors because typically those of us building audio and video systems really do need more power uh, for fans. So anyway, that's a nice little addition right there by Gigabyte. Uh, everything else is pretty straightforward on this board. You've got a USB 3 connector for front panel USB 3. Of course, here's your ATX power connector. Your 12 volt rails are right over here up on the north bridge. Uh, of course, as I say, it's a LGA 1150-sized um, socket on this, and so there's plenty of coolers that are going to work nicely with this board. Uh, it's going to work out of the box with, of course, Crossfire and SLI, which is nice. And then let's just talk about SATA connectors. Pretty good number of connectors on this, uh, on this board, which is nice. And... Um, you know, so you can connect all of your, your drives and probably still have the ability to maybe build a RAID. Not a huge one, but a pretty basic RAID, which is going to suit most folks pretty well. You have down here on the south side, you're going to find 
your header connectors for power, reset, and etc., your USB connectors, a COM port, a TPM port, and your front panel audio port. And uh, so speaking of front panel audio, let's just talk about onboard audio. Pretty straightforward, your standard surround audio. Uh, you know, I never really end up using these because I always bypass them for audio devices, so not too much of a big deal. One gigabit ethernet port, lots of USB 3, uh, in fact, no USB 2 on this board. So uh, that's just something to keep in mind. You may end up turning off XHCI handoff in your UEFI if you have issues with uh, devices that don't like talking to USB 3 ports. Um, so that is a little bit of a drag to have no USB 2 ports, but USB 3 is, of course, backwards compatible, so hopefully not a big issue for you. Uh, there is onboard video, of course, VGA, DVI, and I believe HDMI. And uh, so lots of onboard and uh, as well as optical out for audio. This is only out, not in out, so just keep that in mind. And then, of course, the thing that probably everybody is really interested in, oh, that little connector thing just went flying, Thunderbolt ports. So there are Thunderbolt ports on this, uh, on this board. Thunderbolt 2. So if you're using a Thunderbolt device of some kind, you can actually get access to Thunderbolt uh, on this motherboard. comes in at a pretty good price to be able to get into Thunderbolt. Um, I'm not necessarily using Thunderbolt very much now. I don't have an audio device for it. I'm not using it for monitors. But of course, as we all know, Thunderbolt does have some great uh, throughput. And it's uh, definitely impressive for expandability. You may not have a use for it, but if you're doing an upgrade, you might find that Thunderbolt is something you want to add to your build. And then, of course, uh, you got to hand it to Gigabyte. They continue to give us a combination PS2 mouse and keyboard port. I don't know who else is using those kinds of things anymore, but somebody out there still is, and Gigabyte wants to help you out if that's the case. Um, okay, so there you go, guys. That's the whole board. Uh, when you really come right down to it. Now, uh, as for doing a build, it's a pretty straightforward board, and uh, I've always been impressed with everything that Gigabyte makes. Lots of hours can go onto these boards, typically, without having a burnout or anything else. The UEFI is pretty strong um, from Gigabyte. Their updates usually fix anything that's going wrong, and otherwise, I've put Gigabyte boards through the ringer, and not had uh, many issues, if at all, and I've built a lot of systems using Gigabyte boards. So I could go into all the other stuff with this with respect to overclocking it and et cetera, et cetera. I'm really not gonna do that because there's plenty of guides out there, and I think that you guys can pull those up. I just wanna be able to show you what's happening in the box with this board. So I hope you found this useful. As I say, it's the Gigabyte GA-Z97X UD7TH, another one of those super long motherboard names. Uh, Thunderbolt enabled motherboard coming to you from Gigabyte. If you got questions or comments, please feel free to get in touch with me. Visit me on brianbotkiller.com or find me on Facebook, Twitter, and all those other lovely places. As always, guys, I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care. You read lies, force fed, what you believe. False prophets, telling